Hey, this is John. Thanks for joining me for part 7 of building Bandai's HGUC RX78-2 Gundam. Today, I'm going to look at post-shading your model. In part 6 of this series, I looked at pre-shading the armor on your Gunpla. Um, pre-shading is, is fine, it's great. Don't, please don't construe what I'm about to say as uh, I'm against pre-shading. I do it, I demonstrated it, you know, it, it, it's a technique that has its place. However, in building models over the years, um, especially aircraft model, which have a lot of shading. I like the panel line shading look, so I've done that hundreds of times. I've found the most flexible method for me is to do what's called post shading. Now, post shading differs from pre shading in that the shading goes on after the paint, not before it. So it's a fairly simple distinction between the two. The difference is you're having to be a little more precise, use a little more airbrush control, but the flexibility that post shading gives you, uh, I think, makes it a more powerful tool in the long run. You can get much finer of a line, I think. You can build it up, you can make it as dramatic as you want, as, as, as mellow, I guess you'd say, as you want it to be. Um, you're not having to spend a lot of time covering up paint. You're laying it down over it. So, and, and if, you're, if you're working across multiple colors, um, you don't have to work. When you're, when you're pre-shading and you put down a, a, a black pre-shade line and then you're trying to post-shade over or you're trying to paint over it and you have to do two different colors, well, you're either faced with the choice of painting the one and then masking everything off and pre-shading again and then painting the other and then pulling the masking off or trying to do it so that you preserve the pre-shade through several layers of paint and weathering and all of those things. It can just really get to be a little bit of a pain. Post-shading eliminates all of that. You can take the fully base painted model and you can go in and do a whole lot of different effects. Again, which I'm going to demonstrate today and it gives you far more potential for an interesting finish. Again, I'm not saying don't pre-shade. What I am saying is that learning post-shading in addition to pre-shading will give you more tools in your toolkit, so to speak, that will help you in finishing your gunpla. Okay, for doing post-shading, of course you're going to need a few things. Um, you'll need the parts that you're going to post shade. Um, this is one of them that I'll be working on. An airbrush is required. Um, this is Badger's Patriot Extreme 105. It's got a 0.3 nozzle on it. It's got this air adjustment valve here. Um, it gives me very good control over uh, making very fine lines, so that'll be an important piece of the puzzle. Another very important piece is color selection. I'm going to be doing this blue part and I'm going to be doing some red parts. I could use black, but that's going to make for a very, very desaturated, stark line um, and may not give me the look that I want. So essentially trying to find a darker color uh, of, of the base or in the case of you know, if you're working with a lighter color, using your color wheel to try and pick something that's appropriately dark um, but won't desaturate the color, unless that's what you're going for, um, is important. So I'm going to use kind of a dark whole red for the red part, and then I'm going to use a, a navy blue, a dark sea blue for the blue part. So It'll give me the, the shading that I want, but it will preserve the color. So color choice is really important when you're post shading. My paint choice for today will be to me is whole red and to me is sea blue. Now, the reason I choose Tamiya, and this leads me to what I 
jokingly will call my secret weapon. For thinning these, I, I could use Tamiya's thinner, I could use lacquer thinner, I can use all sorts of things to thin these with, and they do work. However, there's a higher probability that they'll, they'll, you'll get too much on the model and the thinner may do what's called spidering. You'll see the liquid just blasting out in all directions. To help prevent that, my secret weapon is alcohol. This is the 91% isopropyl alcohol um, stuff. The reason I like thinning with this, and it works great with Tamiya paints. There, there's others that you can use it with, but I've found for me, Tamiya works best. The reason I like using this is its evaporation rate is fairly high. So I'm able to get a good line on the model, good control, and not have near the problem with flooding the surface or spidering that you can potentially have with other thinners. You can't overdo it with this. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't totally prevent it, but using alcohol as the thinner in conjunction with these Tamiya paints is something I've done for years, and I had tried many, many other, many, many other methods, Mahoney, and uh, I've, I've not found anything in my experience that works as well as um, using alcohol for a thinner with Tamiya paints. So that's what I'm going to be uh, using. Okay, I'm going to start by painting this part. It's got just a little bit of post shading, and I'm going to use the whole red. The way I prepare my airbrush is I'll use the alcohol first, and I'm just going to pour that in. And I, I fill the color cup about two-thirds of the way. I'm not going to use near that amount, but alcohol's cheap, and I want it to be very, very diluted. Not diluted like D-E-L-U-D-E-D, -E -E but diluted like thin. Never mind. Um, now, I'll get a brush, um, and, and you'll have to, honestly, a lot of this is, you just have to do it a few times and see what works for you. Some people like uh, post shading with alcohol and Tamiya paints to be a little thicker, some a little thinner. It's going to be up to you, and then there's a little trial and error involved depending on the paint. I'm just going to get a, a brush full. I'm going to let that drop fall off the side there, and I'm just going to mix that in. Now, that gives a really, really, really thin paint. Important next step, put the cap on. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. Now, the way I determine if I have enough paint or too much, too little, whatever, in the color cup is by seeing how it builds up in a few test passes. So what I'm going to do is turn on my compressor here, reaching down to the floor. <laughs> there. All right. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spray on the piece of paper towel here. And you can see the colors start coming through. And you see it is just very, very light. Not much there at all. Now, the, the air pressure is set on about 18 PSI, but I dialed it down with the little adjustment nozzle. If you don't have an adjustment nozzle like that, you may want to lower your air pressure. Eh, try 12 to 15, see how that works for you. You don't want it to be splattering. Uh, luckily, with this such a thin mixture, you can generally avoid splattering. So I'm getting the color and the flow that I think I want to use. So I'm ready to go. All right, I'm going to be doing this with the camera between me and the subject. So it'll be a little difficult for me to get to. If I get it out of focus or if I bump the camera, I do apologize. But I'll start just getting the flow. I, I establish it on my thumb. Um, 
and I'm just looking for the paint to start showing up. And when I get it, I just start applying it right there where I want that shading. Now, you'll know your paint is thin enough when it's taking eight to 10 passes to really start building up the color. At first, most of what you'll see will be just a clear liquid. You have to hold it at an angle to see that liquid. But then as you start getting it going, you'll be able to see the color developing and your shading will start appearing. Now typically I try to do a little finer line than that. But I'm having a little difficulty because it's usually right up to my face. Um, as I mentioned before, I have some eyesight issues, so sometimes uh, this can be a little tricky to do on camera. But I just continue on around, and I get the color going. And even if it does spider a little bit, because you're putting on so little, it's usually not a problem. The further back you go, the, 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 more, um, the more spread out the line will be, the closer in, the tighter it will be. But it just gives me a shaded look that's very easy to control, can go across many colors, and, uh, and I think it gives, it gives it, I like the appearance better, quite honestly. So I'm going to continue with this line. I'm going to build this up a little more. These sharp angles like that, I want a little more of a shadow. And you can even fade this out. You can bring it up the side of the model a little bit to give a little more shading if you want. You can create a gradient effect. Again, that's I think that's one of the benefits of post shading is giving you the flexibility to do that. And there you see, it's simple enough, but it works very good. Now I could build it up further if I wanted to, if I wanted a more dramatic look. I could use a darker color. Um, if I wanted it to be a little darker, I could use a little more brown that's um, darker. I could add that to it. But that's, that's essentially post shading. Okay, here's a piece that I did off camera and I was able to get a little closer in and you can see how a very fine line can be achieved. And you'll notice, and I did this deliberately, here's a little more subtle look, and here's a little more of a shaded look. And this, this shows how much you can control it. And it's easy to go back over and add to it. And you can actually combine a little bit of, I guess you'd say pre-shade theory. I actually in my mind call it hyper shading. Um, uh, hyper shading. Um, if you get too much of your post shade on here, you can go back to the base color and just clean up the edges using what's essentially going back to pre shading. But with a little bit of experience, um, generally you can keep it well in control and get it to build up exactly like you want. One other thought occurred to me as I was post shading this foot here, just a little edge here. Another benefit of post shading, and you can actually, you can certainly mix pre shading and post shading. There's nothing that says you can't do that. In fact, I've, I do it fairly frequently. But you can, for instance, I, I post shaded this. I'll go back later and add in some chipping and some weathering and all sorts of things to it. If any of the later steps, tend to diminish or cover up your post shading and you want it to bring it back to, to kind of being in the fore, you just go and apply the post shading over those other effects. So post shading gives some, some very good benefits in terms of when you can do it. it you can apply it at any point um, when you're working on your model. So again, it's, it's much more flexible in terms of uh, application and when you can do it and getting 
the, the desired effect uh, much easier than you could, in my opinion, with pre-shading. Okay, to continue with uh, the post-shading, I've got my blue part here, and I've got my C blue, to me it's XF17 C blue, loaded up in my airbrush, just the same way I did the red, two-thirds of a color cup of alcohol, a brush full of the C blue, and I uh, did some testing off uh, off camera to make sure the flow was right. And again, all I'm going to do, and forgive me if I get off off camera, but I'm going to just make sure I got my flow going. And once I see that building up, pardon for bumping the camera, I'll just go in and start adding that to the model again. And it's building it up in very slow layers. Now, you can always thicken up the paint. If you don't want to build it up that slow, if you're looking for a more dramatic look, you can use slightly thicker paint. And, you know, not have to use as many passes as I'm doing. But I like to have maximum control over it. So I build it up very slow. And like I said previously, you can do a little bit of a gradient if you want. You can see that starting to show up there. It really gives a lot of control. For areas like back up in those recesses, you can do gradient effects. Um, you can really shade those nicely start a little further down and then bring the gradient up like that and then just kind of pull it out and you've enhanced the shadow with your your shading one other brief note if you're going to be Having two parts that will go together, like these two will, um, you can actually do the post shading along the edge of the join ahead of time. You don't have to wait till it's joined together. You, you certainly can, um, but I actually do it before joining the parts. Um, and once they go together, it'll look just fine. All right, that pretty much is post shading. Um, I know these weren't really large parts that gave a a great view of it, but the technique is fairly simple to do. It's fairly simple to demonstrate. You take really thin paint, you dial the air pressure down on your airbrush, and you just mist on the color and build it up uh, to the level that you want. And you end up with a look that is, in, in some ways, it's indistinguishable from pre-shading but as I've mentioned several times, I think the flexibility that it gives you to do this later in the build, to control the colors better, um, to vary the colors. Uh, you could, if you had a very large part and you were doing some, some zenithal highlighting and some modulation and things, you could post shade towards the top with a lighter color and make it darker as you go down. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility with post shading. Now, admittedly, both post-shading and pre-shading are a stylistic choice in many ways, but it's good to have both options available in your toolkit, so to speak, so that as you're working on your model, you'll be able to decide which one is the right application for the effect you want to achieve, because that's ultimately uh, what it's all about. We don't learn technique for the sake of technique, but technique to achieve the end that we're looking for. Well, I think I'll call that an end to this video. Thank you so much for watching the video, especially if you're still watching at this point. I'm really grateful for that. Um, there's links below in the description that tell you all about my blog, uh, my social media, um, the, the different ways that you can keep up with my work. Uh, certainly, if you would consider supporting me on Patreon, I would be very grateful for that. 
Um, it helps me continue doing this work, upgrading equipment, keeping me in supplies, um, because I don't know that we'd be able to afford for me to do this otherwise. So I'm very grateful for it. And if you're a current Patreon supporter, thank you so much um, for coming alongside me and helping me in this because it really makes it all possible. So give post shading a try. Uh, just jump into it. If it doesn't look like you want, paint over it and do just drive on. Um, it's a great technique and one I highly recommend. With all that being said, happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.